In this tutorial, we're going to go over a couple of things. I'm going to introduce you to the Grasshopper scripting language, um, which is a scripting language for Rhinoceros software. It extends the capabilities of Rhino. And as an introduction uh, to geometric unfolding, I'm going to show you how to use Grasshopper to create um, dot dash patterns uh, in your lines as preparation for laser cutting. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to input lines and we're going to use Grasshopper to define the length and size of our dot dash pattern. And we're going to go over uh, this workflow from within Rhino. So, as you can see here, we have our uh, geometric pattern here laid out, and uh, we've imported this from a PDF file. And as you can see, these lines are on a layer, and they're on the default layer uh, right now. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to bring these lines into Grasshopper and turn them into dash lines, because if the laser cutter were to cut these, it would cut these off because it sees it as a single line. So our goal is to break them up into individual line segments. And this is how we do that. We want to invoke Grasshopper. And in Grasshopper, uh, I've loaded in the script, the uh, dot dash edit script. Now, uh, some simple Grasshopper logic here. The left side contains your inputs, things that come in. Your right side contains your output. Uh, this script has three different modules, one to create an even dash line, one to create an uneven dash line, and one to do dot dash uh, patterns. So basically on this side is our inputs, and in this case we want to input a curve object. Okay, it's looking for a curve. Whenever these are painted orange, that means that they are looking for something. Okay, so in this case, we want to input curves. So what we can do, we can come over to our layer here, our default layer, and we can select the objects on that layer, which are all of our curves. And then we can right-click on this node here, and we say set multiple curves because we want to input all the curves that are on that layer. Now, once we do that, it's a good idea to just hide this layer so we don't confuse ourselves. And we're going to hide that layer. Now you note that these layers are painted red. That means that they belong to Grasshopper in this case. And we can use this numeric slider that has the value. And this value is based upon whatever units you have set up in your Rhino, Rhino file. And you can adjust this slider to set your, to set your uh, dash pattern. Okay, and usually you want a 50-50 ratio. You don't want it to be too small because that'll just uh, cause your cardboard to break when it's done that way. And you just want to do it visually. And, and you also try to make sure that you line this up so that you have a cut line along the edges there, right along the edge vertex. So I'm going to go with that value right there. I could type in a value, like if I wanted to make it 0.6, I could do like that, and it would be 0.6. Okay, and so we're going to go with that, uh, and I'm going to adjust this slightly so that I have those in the corners like that, and that's good. So now I want to take this from Grasshopper and bring it into Rhino, okay? In order to do that, in order to accomplish that, what I need to do, I need to come over here on my output side. And I'm going to click on this node right here, which is my output node, which is my dash line. And I'm going to right-click that. Note that the objects turn green, that my objects turn green in this case. And so now I want to create a new layer within Rhino. And I'm going to paint that blue because that's going to be an inner cut. Okay, and I make that the active layer. Your output always goes to the active layer. So in this case, with that selected, I can come over here to Solution and say Bake Selected. Okay, and I right-click there. And now, if I were to turn off my display in Grasshopper, don't draw any preview geometry, you'll note that those lines now belong 
to Rhino. And I can select them within Rhino and they're they are on that layer. And that is the basic workflow for uh, changing your um, your uh, solid lines that you get from your geometric unfolding patterns into dash lines that are suitable for laser cutting. Okay, in the second part of uh, this tutorial on adding dot dash lines from input curves, I'm going to go over the three different options that we have within this Grasshopper script. In this script, uh, we can produce three different types of uh, dash dashes. We can produce a even dash line, so we have one value, and whatever that value is, it's going to be the uh, value for both the dash and the gap. Okay. In the second, we have uneven dash lines in which we have what we consider dash and gap. So we can control each one of those individually. So it's dash, gap, dash, gap. Okay, it just uh, cycles through there. The third option allows us to do a, um, a dot dash pattern. A dot dash pattern. So we have dash, gap, dot, dash. Those are the options that are set up in that. And let's look at each one of these. We'll go through each one of these individually. So we'll start by selecting our curves. Okay, and we're going to input these into uh, Grasshopper by saying select multiple curves. Okay, so that turns gray, which means that those now belong to Grasshopper. Let's turn these lines off in Rhino and let's turn our display on there in Grasshopper so that we can see our active object within Grasshopper. And with this slider, we can adjust this slider to adjust the size of our gap. Okay. And uh, you want to make sure that usually a general rule is to maintain a 50-50 ratio between dash and gap, but you don't want your uh, dash lines excessive because the laser has to do more work in this case. And also, the more uh, paper you take away, the more likely when you fold it that it might actually break. So uh, and another thing that you want to do, you want to make sure that you have your dashes in the corners also. That's something else that you can that you can do there. So that's how the first panel works. Your even dash. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Now I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna clear the values from this one right here, and I'm gonna turn these on again here, and I'm gonna select those, and I'm gonna input these into the second one. Okay. And set multiple curves once again, and once again we'll just turn that off temporarily, and now we can use our slider to set both our dash size but also our gap spacing. So here you can have a different dash size with your gap and a different gap size. And you can adjust the slider uh, just that and I'm going to decrease this size here like so. And so there you can have two different sizes for your dash and your gap. Okay. And sometimes that's good because instead of using a dash pattern, you could use a one even gap for your, uh, for your mountain, uh, mountain folds and a uneven gap for your valley folds. And you can differentiate between the two using that strategy. So here we have a, a smaller gap than our dash size, okay? And uh, we went over in the tutorial how we could come over here and how we could assign this to a layer in Rhino by uh, coming up to Solutions, Bake Selected Objects, we'll turn that off, and you notice that those now belong to Rhino, okay? Um, and let's uh, select these objects, and I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to clear the values here. Okay, so that those are no longer there. Let me turn this on. Again, I'm going to select these objects. And this time I'm going to assign them to our uh, third node, which allows us to do a dot dash pattern. Okay, and I'm going to set multiple curves once again. Let's turn that off. Now, with this one, we have our, uh, our dash size 
Okay, we have our dash size. We set that. The second node represents our gap size. And the third node, which I always make a lot smaller, represents our dot, okay? And I usually make that really small, like 0.1 or 0.2, so that the laser just basically fires a point for that node. And sometimes you can type that in, that's 0.1, and then I do the final gap. And sometimes it's a good idea uh, to make these uh, equal or close. And of course, you can always type these in, like if I wanted those to be 0.7, type that in, 0.7, I get a precise value, and, and there we have our dot dash patterns, okay? And it's as simple as that. It's a fairly straightforward script and widget, but it has a lot of uh, powerful uses that will help us, especially when we uh, begin to uh, use these on, a on our larger uh, geometric unfolding uh, projects uh, during the course of the uh, semester. Um, and it's a really good, it's a really good um, and powerful and useful little widget that uh, saves us a lot of work that we used to have to do in Illustrator. And that's, that completes this tutorial.